The basic problem with every money issued by government in the history of the world is that sooner or later they print too many of them and the currency fails. Cryptocurrency is a form of money that is issued by a computer network instead of being issued by a country or government, which is the way money usually comes into being. The other big difference between regular money is that cryptocurrency exists only in computer memory. It doesn't have a physical paper or coinage form. People have used many kinds of money throughout the history of the world, but this is the first virtual money that you can't hold. It just exists as bits and bytes of computer memory. A digital wallet is simply a, it's really an address on the internet where you keep track of how many bitcoins or other assets that you may hold. And there's a password called the public key that is required to reduce, to, to release assets from the digital wallet. Bitcoin is by far the most successful of the cryptocurrencies, but there's more than 600 of them out there now. And Bitcoin was neither the first and probably not the last. But Bitcoin essentially made a number of breakthroughs in design of the security and storage and record keeping, which was a huge advance over what people had worked on before. And it attracted a large audience and it's now been scaled up to the point that it's used about 100,000 times a day around the world either to trade between people or to purchase goods and services from merchants in the mainstream economy. And that's a kind of breakthrough that few, if any, of the other digital currencies have ever really made. A lot of the interest dates back to sometime in the 20th century. People as early as Milton Friedman and John Nash, some of the great economists, have talked openly about the problems of the integrity of money. The idea is that if you had a form of money where the money was issued by a computer program at a rate that everybody agreed on was good and the computer couldn't somehow be changed and the government wouldn't be able to step in and issue too many units of the money, that this money would be a better store of value, it would be more appealing to the public. So I think a lot of the people who worked on digital currency were trying to outthink the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank. And I think it's by no means coincidental that Bitcoin took off in the depths of the financial crisis, that Bitcoin began to trade in January of 2009 when we were really near the very bottom and banks were falling into disrepute and governments were being terribly criticized around the world. And Bitcoin tapped into some of the anger that was circulating at that point. Bitcoin is released into circulation at a certain fixed rate and there are currently about 25 new Bitcoins every 10 minutes that essentially get introduced to somebody's digital wallet somewhere in the network. The process is called mining, where people, as though they were mining for gold, they go online and mine for Bitcoin, essentially by competing with each other to solve complicated code breaking problems. So new Bitcoins are basically awarded to people whose computers are able to crack the code and unlock them faster than anybody else's computer. The mining of Bitcoin is actually very clever because what the miners do in the background is update the shared ledger of all the Bitcoin transactions. So mining has actually been described as competitive bookkeeping. You know, imagine there were a bunch of accountants keeping track of everyone's bank account and whoever could do it the quickest and most accurately would get an award of the new money coming into circulation. The blockchain is sometimes called a shared ledger or a distributed ledger. What it simply is, is a record of the spending of every Bitcoin ever mined, every time it's ever been used. And so if you receive a Bitcoin from somebody, you can go on the blockchain and basically authenticate it by going all the way back to the miner who first introduced it into the network.